Hey everyone, Sinless Super here with a guide on how to fight Rudolph. This boss is treated mainly as a joke compared to Magma due to how much easier Magma can seem to fight. But as you learn to fight Rudolph and as you learn his mechanics more, in comparison to Magma, if you know if you know Magma's mechanics more, Rudolph I find to be a much harder boss fight because even if you know what's coming, it doesn't mean you'll have the time to react to it. So while it does less damage in its attacks, its damage will be able to stick more often due to how much easier it can hit you. So, we'll start off with, with its initial head swing move, right? If you're in, in close range, it will hit you for a decent amount of damage, and it's actually, I find, one of the hardest moves from its kit to Fantasia. Basically what you do, it'll bring its head down when you see the red light appear as it's as long as you know the red light timings, as it's about to disappear, that is when you want to Fantasia or try to dodge it in order to activate said Fantasia. And as you notice, it does a string of electric moves after, right? If you get hit by the headbutt get directly in front of it, you will get hit by some of the damage afterwards. So it's either best to just avoid the move entirely and play it safe, or if you're confident, try to Fantasia it. So you're wondering why I use my Omnium Hand Cannon here. I did a little bit of practice against Rudolph in Raid Mode and forgot that its Discharge move in World is much easier in comparison to its Raid move. Right In Raid, you'll, you'll drop your to the floor and then you'll have to activate all four corners or use Omnium Hand Cannon. Here, you just gotta move, right? It's very simple. And you just keep running in one direction. You can damage it while it's going on. But at the end of its duration, it will release an AoE around it, so just keep aware of that. Just like that one. So you notice here, this is its jump attack, right? There are two different jump attacks on Rudolph. The first one, it'll jump in the air towards you. If you can see it jumping the entire jump, that's its regular jumping move, where it'll keep jumping and prancing in the place. Basically, once it's about halfway from landing from its maximum height, that is when you do your dodge, and that will allow you to Fantasia the move. Right here. I've already been dodging for maybe a fraction of a second. And that's what allows me to edit the Fantasia. And so against other bosses, normally you'll dodge from side to side. With this move and with some other moves on this boss, you will dodge in a circular motion. Kind of like you are running in a circle together and you're chasing it and it's chasing you. Of course, you will do it accordingly because it will move faster than your dodge running can. This right here. This is what I find to be its most dangerous move in its entire kit. All right, where it does a quick jump back and proceeds to instantly charge you. In extreme close range, this gives you almost no time to react. And even in moderate range, you don't have as much time to react as if you'd like. And the thing is, it does let you chase you too. It, it just for direction. So if you get hit by it, it will chain stun you and keep hitting you backwards until it finally does its head swing in the end. And that will do a ton of damage. The head swing alone for my health bar probably will do at least three points my health bar. Or at least that's the maximum amount of health I've had before I get hit by it and die, right? But thankfully what you can do is if you if you fill the Fantasia the initial hit before you get hit, due to the slower head swing, you can if you have a dodge remaining, end of all the hits before the head swing, you can do a dodge and Fantasia slash dodge that last hit. So you will survive. As long as you do have a dodge and you're constantly pressing the dodge key while you're being hit. Of course, kind of like it's prancing move, go in a circular motion as well. Right, so you have to kind of chase it in a way, but it's a lot easier to dodge in that regard because it doesn't it doesn't turn as easily nor as efficiently as when it does its prancing move. So it's also easy to dodge the head swing in comparison. And this is what I find to be its second most lethal move. Now it's not going to kill you in one hit, but this is actually what I bring Kuan for mistake on my end having used Kuan prior to this. The issue with this move, it jumps high in the air and lands on the ground, 
Now, thankfully, I didn't get hurt because I managed to perfect dodge it, although Fantasia was off cooldown, so no Fantasia was activated. The hard part about this move is that he jumps so high in the air, you can't see him. And by the time you realize what's happening, and by the time you could even adjust your camera, it's probably too late. So this is one of the moves that you have to kind of get the timing down by heart, rather than rely on any visual cue, because you generally would not see this boss while doing so. So even Fantasia, getting the cooldown of an attack that you cannot see, is very difficult, and that's generally what you want to save Kuant for. And the damage from this move is significant enough to where if you do get hit by it, you will be in a lot of trouble. Right? You need to avoid damage from this move because it does at least half of my health bar. And right there, this is the other move it has, right? If you're behind it to a certain degree, this is the easiest move his entire kit to dodge. It's not hard to Fantasia either, so there's not much of a point going about it. But it will just do a rear kick, right? You'll see it look behind, and then as soon as it looks forward, it'll do a rear kick. Relying on the red light will not really give you enough time to react. After all, you barely, it's kicking as soon as the red light appears. So you have to rely more when you see it turn its head back. And then finally, it's Rampage mode, right? So this guy does not cover Rampage mode. Because as long as you're fighting it the right way, it should never enter Rampage mode and stay in Rampage mode for a certain period of time. If you try to fight this thing in Rampage mode, it's a whole different ballgame. Damage. It has its one-hit kill move that is really destroy you, right? This does not cover Rampage mode. Because you should be fighting it around these points so that when it does enter Rampage mode, you can activate it instantly and cool it down. One thing you can do, by the way, is that when it does enter Rampage 1 and say that you aren't as close by one of these as you need to be, then you can run to one. Don't stand directly on top of it, but what Rudolph likes to do is that he is if he's a certain distance that he has to run towards you, he will end up doing a jump leap strike attack, right? He'll do the air on the ground. But if you have this if you have the smoke cooling him down around it. As he jumps in the smoke, it will cancel his jump attack. And he'll slowly fall to the ground and enter his cooldown phase. And he'll be a free hit for that point. And that, quite frankly, is all you do about Rudolph. Those are all his moves. So if you have any questions, you can ask me in the comments. That's for the clarification. Then maybe of a sort. Otherwise, it's just a rinse and repeat of every single move you've seen so far. Obviously, that move is the most dangerous move in the target kit still, but obviously Rampage mode is the most dangerous mode you can possibly ever enter. And if you, try to, if you try to solo that, you will struggle a lot. Of course, this move, right, I fail to use Kulon. That's why. You saw how much damage did reinforce my health bar. It's a very lethal move that is hard to see and hard to react to. So make sure Kulon is for that. Otherwise, this covers the guy for now, so... If you have any questions, look for to ask. Alright everyone, yep, okay. Peace for that.